Could Sony finally be preparing to give filmmakers the FX3 they always wanted but never quite got? The rumors surrounding the upcoming Sony FX3II, sometimes referred to as the FX3 Mark II or FX3 II, are stirring up a lot of excitement and with good reason. Based on early leaks and credible insider reports, this new model could be Sony's most significant step forward for independent filmmakers since the original FX3 debut. That camera broke ground by blending cinema quality performance into a compact, mirrorless form factor. But nearly four years later, the world has changed dramatically. Competitors like Canon and Nikon have introduced bold, video-focused models like the Canon C50 and Nikon ZR, both designed to appeal to creators who need professional performance in smaller, more efficient packages. If the leaks prove true, the FX3II could be Sony's decisive response, an effort to reclaim dominance in the hybrid cinema segment. Two major upgrades immediately jump out from the leaks, internal 12-bit RAW recording and open gate support. These aren't just incremental updates, they represent fundamental workflow transformations. Internal 12-bit RAW means filmmakers can now access cinema-grade color depth and dynamic range without relying on bulky external recorders. Meanwhile, open gate recording, capturing the full height of the sensor in a 3-2 aspect ratio, unlocks multi-format flexibility that's perfectly suited for creators who produce content for YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, and cinematic releases all at once. Before diving deeper into those features, it's worth revisiting what made the original FX3 such a beloved tool in the first place, and why it's overdue for a major leap forward. When Sony launched the FX3 in early 2021, it was a revelation. It gave indie filmmakers access to a full-frame cinema camera that was small, light, and affordable, with the same image performance as the A7S III but dressed in a filmmaker-friendly body. It had professional audio inputs, active cooling, and the promise of cinematic color science in a mirrorless-sized body. For documentary filmmakers, wedding videographers, and small production crews, it was the perfect tool for high-end results without the bulk of cinema rigs. But technology moves fast, and four years is a long time in the camera world. By 2024, that once revolutionary design had started to feel dated. Competing systems offered better codecs, higher bit depths, and open gate recording options, while Sony's firmware updates couldn't keep pace with how creators' needs were evolving. That's where the FX3 AI rumors become exciting. Sony seems to be listening to feedback and building the next generation of its compact cinema line with modern flexibility in mind, starting with the internal 12-bit RAW. This feature alone could be transformative. Capturing 12-bit data directly in camera provides a massive increase in color information compared to the typical 10-bit formats seen in previous models. This means smoother gradients, cleaner color transitions, and far more latitude in post-production for color correction and grading. For filmmakers who push shadows, manipulate hues, or perform extensive grading, that extra depth can mean the difference between a good shot and a great one. What makes this even more appealing is that Sony is reportedly doing it all without the need for an external recorder. Traditionally, shooting RAW meant attaching a bulky external unit like an Atomos Ninja or similar device that added cables, batteries, and complexity to what was supposed to be a compact setup. By enabling RAW internally, Sony simplifies everything rigs become lighter, power management becomes easier, and there are fewer points of failure on set. That's not just convenience, it's creative freedom. It allows handheld and gimbal setups to remain agile, while still capturing uncompromised cinematic data. The other headlining feature, open gate recording, may be even more impactful for hybrid creators. This format captures the entire sensor area in its native three two aspect ratio, rather than cropping down to traditional 16, 9 or 17, 9 video frames. The benefit is flexibility. A single take can later be reframed for widescreen, vertical, or square outputs, all from the same source footage. 
for content creators and production houses working across multiple platforms. This is a massive efficiency gain. Instead of reshooting the same scene multiple times for different aspect ratios, you can frame once, shoot once, and decide later how to crop. It's a huge advantage for brands, agencies, and social first filmmakers who need to deliver fast across formats. Now, stepping beyond these two headline features, the rumored hardware itself looks equally promising. Reports suggest that the FX3II will feature a 24.2 megapixel stacked full frame sensor, similar in class to those seen in higher end cinema models. This architecture allows for faster readout speeds and drastically reduced rolling shutter, both critical for handheld and motion-heavy work. There's even speculative chatter about a potential global shutter version, though that remains unconfirmed. If true, that would all but eliminate rolling shutter distortion, giving filmmakers a perfectly natural motion readout even in chaotic or high-speed scenes. Under the hood, Sony is said to be equipping the FX3II with dual next-generation processors and a dedicated AI engine, similar to what's found in the A9iii and other recent flagships. This AI unit is designed to handle subject detection, predictive autofocus, and even real-time recognition of human, animal, and vehicle movement with much higher accuracy. The autofocus on Sony's latest cameras already borders on uncanny. If this new engine pushes it further, the FX3II could become one of the most reliable run-and-gun tools on the market. Other rumored refinements focus on reliability and usability, details that matter on set. Improved active cooling should allow for longer recording times without thermal shutdowns. Dual card slots supporting both CFexpress Type-A and SD cards give flexibility between speed and affordability. Enhanced Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.2 promise faster wireless transfers and remote control functionality, while direct USB-C streaming modes could make live broadcast or mobile workflows simpler than ever. Even the body itself is said to receive subtle but meaningful improvements, stronger weather sealing, a sturdier chassis, and a higher quality articulating LCD screen for better visibility in outdoor conditions. All these upgrades point to a camera that doesn't just look good on paper, it could redefine efficiency and practicality for working filmmakers. Think about what internal 12-bit RAW and open gate together really mean in a real-world production setting. A smaller rig that still delivers true cinematic quality, fewer accessories to rent, carry, or maintain, faster setups and teardowns on location, and a post-production pipeline that's simpler, faster, and more flexible. This is the kind of camera that saves both time and money while expanding creative possibilities. For small studios, commercial shooters, and independent creators, this could be the difference between turning down projects due to gear limitations and confidently saying yes. The FX3II isn't just about higher specs, it's about streamlining creativity. If priced right, it could hit the perfect balance, offering professional-level image capture in a body that's accessible and portable. If Sony delivers on even half of what's been rumored, the FX3II could become one of the most influential hybrid cinema cameras of the decade. Now it's your turn. What feature excites you most? The RAW workflow, open gate versatility, or Sony's new AI autofocus magic? Share your thoughts in the comments because one thing's for sure, this next generation of Sony gear could reshape how indie filmmakers tell their stories.